Today it's going to be a short talk about the, the clock in modular synthesis and we will apply it to Ojulus. And clock is very important, you know, it's just a metronome in, to some, in some sort. But um, you can do pretty complex stuff uh, with uh, just a clock and some tricks. So just some example, uh, many modular synths use a clock divider to create typical so patterns. Let me show you if I take a Here we have some example clock divider is that you have a master okay. clock and then you have so slower clock corresponding to integer division of the original clock and then you create See, very classical pattern uh, using that don't. method. It's very common in modular synth. Uh, you can also do it for instance with more complex like um, uh, a more complex module like the Tempe from Make Noise which is six channel clock divider and multiplier with modifier you can have different resulting pattern you see you know those clocks at different rates but they are integer rates typically so it create kind of for instance a faster hi-hat slower snare drum or slower kick, kick drum and it's very important in the development of the modular because it was this is another clock divider used to uh, derive you know slower clock based on um, faster clock and it's very common to use that or find that in electronic music you know early electronic music so it's a very powerful tool the clock and we will check in Odulus how to use clock and make some tricks to generate uh, funky uh, pattern so I will start Odulus uh, it's a blank template that I first created let's first just take a look here we have um, I we will use drum to make it simple it's just a three instrument drum we have kick snare and cymbal uh, just the output uh, but I prepared these uh, kind of a uh, oscilloscope so that we can see the clock or the gate signal that will trigger the drum sound and we will check that in a few minutes. The other starting point is this thing which is a clock simply. Uh, typically you can run in Hertz but now it's half. It's based on the um, BPM value found here that you can set. So currently it's uh, 231 BPM or 3.85 um, that's uh, Hertz so 3.85 click per second. So the most straightforward thing you can do with a clock is just take the gate and plug it to a kick drum. So now we have a kick drum at steady rate based on our clock. That's cool, but that's not that useful. So the first thing I want to show you is how to use multiple clock and try to sync them to arrive to kind of odd rhythms or automatic pattern generation without using a clock divider in the beginning. So if you just take the clock and copy, paste, um, and we'll get rid of the link. So now we have two clocks. We will make this run a little bit faster than that one, okay? The importance is the difference, let's say. Um, so for a given clock, this is the gate output. This is the Hertz output, which is just a copy of that value so that you can, you know, pass that to other clock and these are inputs and here the gate input is for reset so every time you receive a gate in here the cycling clock will kind of reset so if you use that one as a resetter maybe that's fast for a resetter we'll try slower something slower like 41 bpm so it's fairly slow we pipe that in so every time a gate is engaging here, it will reset the clock. So I will stop talking and let's have a look. And by the way, the width here is controlled by the width parameter here in. So we can make it shorter so that we really see kind of click. And you see with two clocks, one is just re-triggering re that one. You can create simple pattern. And as soon as you play with different uh, pattern you have uh, sorry different earth value in there in there you have resulting pattern which can change a lot so slower maybe uh, yeah some example so that one could be a little bit faster for the reset and of course uh, now we have a basic pattern for uh, our bass drum Let's see how we can just reply this um, for the other instrument and have the same synchronization signal. So we'll have fairly 
um, interesting pattern, but always in sync in terms of the, the bar, let's say. So we can copy a clock. And the trick here is just to use a slower or faster rate than that one. They will be always in sync in terms of the reset, but off sync in terms of actual, you know, pace. So this is an example. And of course, as soon as you increase the BPM, you can have a funky pattern like that, similar to the drum in some way. So we can slow down the reset to have a longer bar. And then the drift should be longer in that case, the drift between the two instruments. Let's try even slower reset time. You see, you have a bunch of snare drum and then reset at some point. Oh, this one is nearly in sync, so it's not very impressive. Let's try something else. Of course, it's a matter of how do you set up all the values. That one is a little bit fast. But anyway, you got the, you got the idea. Let's try slower. Okay, so we can just copy that again for a third instrument, but we make it faster for the hi-hat. And you see there's a kind of some irregular um, occurrence in there based on the reset time. And if you can have a very interesting pattern. Uh, the, the important thing is have to, to, you have to use different hertz value for each clock. And so they will be resetting together, like for the, um, let's say that's corresponding to the, um, the bar, but they will drift uh, each of them in the bar. I hope the sound is not that loud, should be fine. Okay, so just another example to illustrate the, this reset uh, thing. I just want to monitor the reset. So this is a, the gate who creates the reset for the um, all the instruments. So this is the bar length. And we will use just another symbol to highlight this um, symbol. So we will just send the symbol in there. Ah, sorry for this thing, and just create a mixer. Very basic mixer. So I take my mix. Original, that's the original drum. And I will just add. Uh, I don't want it to be too loud. So this is kind of the resetter. So every time we have uh, the symbol, that means that um, we simply had um, a reset of the bar. So just to check. Uh, reset bar reset and of course if you have more difference like this one much faster for instance and if you slow down the reset it would take much more time to have you know the rhythm triggering so you have there's more drift of the instrument within the bar so that's one trick uh, next, I would just add something very simple, which is the, the OR. Now, for instance, now we have three clock and uh, three instrument, or sorry, four clock, and this is the reset. But uh, we can use, let's say, for instance, for the uh, bass drum, we would like to have more, you know, funky variation. So we can use two clock, they use the same reset but we will use a different clock uh, rate for these two. We could simply mix them, but then the gate would, would go above one. So it's better to simply use uh, something called... Uh, it's in the um, math logic. Or, because gate means uh, on off, roughly. So if you use uh, or, it will be simply picking one of the two inputs. So now there's no difference, you see? When it clicks in A, it also clicks in uh, G, the gate output. But now I can combine. And now you see some more complex rhythm are resulting for the bass drum because I've got two clock at different rate. So they drift, uh, but they're combined using the OR. 
but they receive the same um, reset time using the uh, this clock, the slower clock, which is at 23 BPM. You can put it faster a little bit, and you have very difficult, uh, different kind of result depending on these rates. Let's increase that one a little bit. See, interesting pattern, much more complex. The key idea is to use mini clocks and one research, one some, uh, some single research. Uh, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> we will do the same thing for the hi hat. So we we'll just make some room. I copy the clock here, and again I will use the or as shown here. So just take that and make similar kind of combination. Uh, that's the ah, yeah, right. But now they're clicking at the same rate, so you don't have very interesting effect. But you can increase the speed of that one, and you see start to have a drifting rhythms. And again, you can play with the um, overall sync, and that will make various patterns. Of course, this variation can be automated. But that's the bar length, and that's kind of the each clock for each instrument. Now, we'll take um, some time to complexify it a little bit. Like, for instance, here we have two clocks for the hi hat. The hor combination makes them both pass, so you have you know equal amplitude for each of them. But there's a trick you can simply. Um, I will remove that so no more hi hat. And we will serve. Uh, to, 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 um, no, sorry, it's not the wrong. It's a level. So when you do this, you can change the level of the gate so you can have a you know, lower volume hi hat. But if you just use the OR, it will, will not work because that one is uh, like 0 0.5 amplitude and it would, it would just not pass in the R. You can use plus. We'll try that first. Uh, yeah, add. But the problem is that when they will be both clicking, um, the gate will go above one, which might not be the best. Sometimes it because the gate goes above one, the sound instrument later down, the processing is just clipped. So now you can adjust. You see the volume of the tiny hi hat. But the plus is not the best. Or you can use it, but it's better to clip the range between zero and one, and there's something just for that. In math, arithmetics, no, 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 logic, numbers, no, signal, uh, range. So this will take an input signal in there and clip it between 0 and 1. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we just clip it. And you see it's the same, but now we have two levels of gates. The faster one, okay, but much faster. We can make it lower in terms of amplitude and have some interesting rhythms. So again, just a matter of combining uh, clocks and gates, but also playing with the volume or the level of the gate to have different pattern. So talking about patterns, just to give you an idea, we change. Oh, this one is useless. That's interesting. Sorry. Uh, we can change just a little bit of the rate to see what's going to be the effect. You can have very, very different uh, results. This one is a little boring. It's because the BPM is in the range of uh, really in the same range than the uh, reset. Oh, sorry, we have two clock for the bass drum. So very, very different effect can be reached. Yeah, that's the second trick that we explore. Now we will make it a more complex jazzy beat. One of the limitations now, which is not necessarily a limitation, is that the measure duration is the same for all or for clack. You see, we received the resync for all of them all together. One trick is to use a clock divider for that one. So you can change at which time these clock will be receiving sync signal, but it will be integer division. So let's try it. Uh, I think it's a matter of arithmetic, not logic. It's a shift register. So we'll take some time to check the shift register. Uh, for that purpose, I will just copy a clock. Whoops, sorry. Come on. Here. We just want to focus on that for a minute. 
so imagine that this is kind of your eight, uh, sorry, 16 node. So if we take a look, that's fast. In fact, this thing is producing the same rate as that one. So maybe your 16, 16 note, and these will be the eighth. And uh, sorry for my bad English. A quarter, uh, and after that, half and wall, for instance. So it's kind of a way to have um, slower grid, and you can have a lot of fun with that. So just to show you. Uh, we have the sorry withering waveform. So this is kind of my fastest grid. This one just below. We'll click. Sorry, this one is better. You see, this one is clicking. You need two click of that one to have one click of that one. This is a one four one eight. And this is very powerful. Let me show how this can change our pattern. Whoops, I would keep the shift register. I just want to plug my reset here. And let's say I like the bass drum. I just use the same reset for the bass drum, for the two bass drum. But then I want to make some more drift for the snare drum. So it will only reset every two bars, the, the, the snare drum. And I can do reset of the ayat only. Sorry, I'm confused. Uh, oh yeah, this is the snare. This is the ayat. Okay, maybe I should have um, created another one just for the snare. So I'll copy for the snare. We send that to the snare so we can have different. Because now the ayat and the snare before that they were combined. Now you can see, and you can use a different rate for your sync of your ayat. And now you start to have more complex drifting pattern because the resets of your five clocks here, they're not necessarily the same. The bass drum is resetting every time we have a click here. The snare drum is resetting every two click of the bar duration based on that one and the Sorry, that's not, that's the high hat. And the snare drum is being reset every four bars of that clock. And you can have very interesting pattern, and you can then increase the drift. So let's try a more funny exploration. This is our snare drum. You can slow it down. And you, for instance, we have two clock for the high hat, two clock for the bass drum. Even more complex. Thing can happen if you don't reset the two bass drum clock at the same rate. So it's just even more complex rhythm, but you still use a resetting grid based on that uh, super slow BPM as kind of a measure for your bars. And you see many interesting patterns can appear. That's roughly it. So see you maybe next time in the next. Uh, Portfolio. Oh no, it's not portfolio. Sorry, confused. Tutorial. Uh, just one last trick. Uh, you can use the width WM parameter to do some kind of masking. Check this out. If it's very short, see the duration of the click that triggers the bass drum a very um, short duration. But if you make it very wide, sometimes because of the whore, it will just hide the other one and it it will not appear, so you can even have more complex rhythm using that trick. Let's check that. There, you see? You can mask other clicks based on your width. That can be also very interesting. Like that kind of drifting. That's our snare drum, but the snare is alone, so nothing special will happen. Yeah, that's roughly it. Create complex rhythms and patterns using clock, uh, various clock with uh, one sync clock or combination. Also use uh, different volumes for different gates and use shift register to have a resetting time different for each clock. That's it. See you next time.